Okay, so welcome back to this video in which we are discussing uh, uniform convergence of continuous functions. Okay, uh, so um, what we want to do is prove that if we have a sequence of continuous functions which converges uniformly to another function L of x, uh, then, that's, uh, then that function L of x is also going to be a continuous function. That's our aim. Uh, so we've said we've got our L of x here. We now want to prove that it's continuous everywhere. So we said pick an arbitrary k which is an interval, sorry, pick an arbitrary k, which is an element of the interval a, b, and pick an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Our task is now to say that we, uh, to show that we can construct, uh, that we can find some delta greater than zero, such that the interval uh, k minus delta to k plus delta, which is this orange interval down here, so let me just highlight it, this interval here, we need to construct some orange, some delta, such that this orange interval is mapped completely into that epsilon interval for around L of K, basically. Okay, now, uh, we're going to use the fact that this sequence of functions converges uniformly to L of X, and we're also going to use the fact that it converges, uh, sorry, that all of the sequence of functions are continuous. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, right, um, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to say, okay, construct an, a ribbon around this function L, we're going to use uniform continuity, uh, uniform convergence first. Uh, so we're going to construct an epsilon ribbon around this function L of x. And it's not going to be of size epsilon, though. It's going to be of size epsilon over 3. So we've got our epsilon. Epsilon is fixed. This epsilon interval is this interval around L of k now. Now I'm going to make a much smaller interval. I'm, go uh, I'm going to make a much smaller ribbon, sorry. I'm going to make this ribbon of size... Um, epsilon over 3, so the width is obviously 2 epsilon over 3, but one bit of it, like the bit from the function up to the upper bound of the ribbon is going to obviously be of size epsilon over 3, and then epsilon over 3 also going down to the lower bound of the ribbon. Okay, and now by uniform continuity, uh, there exists uh, some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies uh, that, well, it implies that the uh, function f little n is within this epsilon over 3 ribbon. So it implies that the modulus of f n x minus L of x is less than epsilon over 3 for all, for all x is an element of a, b. Okay, right. Now, I only need one of these functions. So basically what this says is if I draw out this, and I'll get rid of this and move this up. Right, so what this says is that if I have the sequence of functions here, so this is our sequence, f1 of x, f2 of x, etc., then what this says is that there will be some point in this sequence, f big N of x, such that if you take, if you look at that function there, f big N of x, or you look at any function beyond that in the sequence, uh, then uh, that function is going to be within uh, this epsilon over 3 ribbon, basically. Okay, now basically, I don't need uh, a whole tail of functions uh, which are within this ribbon. I just need one for my argument. So I might as well pick the uh, first one. I might as well pick this f big N of x. It's the most natural one to pick. Uh, so uh, we're going to use f big N of x. So what I basic the property of f big N that I want is that it's within this epsilon ribbon. So if I draw f big N, it's going to probably make the picture look awful. Uh, but basically, if I draw f big N, I'll have to make a new picture after this. Uh, if I draw f big N, it's within that epsilon ribbon. So that uh, waggly uh, line I've just drawn is f big N of x. Okay, so f big N of x is within the epsilon ribbon. Now there's something else we know about f big N of x. It's also continuous, and that is going to be very, very important, uh, because basically what we're now going to do is say, okay, the value that this limit function L ascribes to the point K is L of K, and the value that this function F big N of X ascribes to K is F big N of K, but that's within epsilon over 3 of of uh, the value that L ascribes to K. So it's within, certainly within this epsilon interval around L of K. Now, that function, F big N of X, is, is um, a continuous function. So we can apply the fact that we can find, uh, we can apply continuity basically to say that uh, points around uh, K um, 
k for this function f big n of x uh, are going to be near f big n evaluated at k basically and then uh, so that's what continuity means intuitively it means that nearby points in the domain are mapped onto nearby points in the codomain so basically we can apply the fact that nearby points in the codomain around k are going to be mapped onto nearby points by this function and then we can say uh, that uh, okay those are now still going to be within this epsilon over free ribbon so they're going to be a certain closeness to to the value f of k, basically. Uh, well, they're going to be, sorry, they're going to be a certain closeness uh, to the value that the limit function would ascribe to those nearby points. And then, basically, we'll get what we want. Okay, right. Uh, so I'm going to apply uh, the, we're going to use this continuity. So, uh, continuity tells me that if I take, um, I'll draw another picture here. So here is the interval a, b. And now, ignore the limit function. Let's just draw what f big n of k, x was, sorry. So this is our function f big n of x. Okay, so I've taken away the function l of x. I've taken away the ribbon. I've just now subtracted out the um, function f big n of x. Now, we've still got our point k here, okay? Now, the fact that it is, uh, this function f big n of x is continuous means that if you give me any... Uh, Eps uh, let's say, uh, what should I say, uh, if for all eta greater, uh, greater than zero, there will exist some, and I need another Greek letter, let's say alpha, there will exist an alpha uh, greater than zero, uh, such that if, um, if y is an element of the alpha interval around k, so k minus alpha to k plus alpha, then it implies, implies that f of y is an element of the interval uh, from um, f big n of k minus uh, eta to f big n of k plus eta. So basically what I've said is you give me any eta around uh, f big n of k here, so you, you construct an eta interval around f big n of k, uh, so this is this eta interval here, so that's that eta interval here, this is an eta interval, um, then I can find you some alpha interval around k, this alpha interval around k, uh, such that that alpha interval is completely mapped into the eta interval around fn of k. So this is this alpha interval here, down here. Okay, right, so uh, let eta equal epsilon over 3 again. So let eta equal epsilon over 3, which is certainly a number greater than 0, so you can do it. So we're going to let this interval basically go down to epsilon over 3 as well, and I can find you some alpha such that all of the points, um, all of the points within that alpha interval around k are mapped onto, uh, it, are mapped into this, et, uh, this epsilon over 3 interval around f big n of k. Right, okay. Now, uh, my claim is that I can use the original delta I needed in the original problem, where we're trying to prove that L of x is continuous, my claim is that I can use delta equal alpha. So I can use this alpha interval that I found here as my delta interval around k, uh, for which um, if you take any point in there, the uh, value that that point is ascribed by the function L, the limit function, is going to be within the epsilon interval around L of k, basically. That's my claim. Now what I need to do is show you that. So, uh, take uh, the way I'm going to show you that is I'm going to take an arbitrary point within this alpha interval and show you that the distance that it is away from LK is going to be less than epsilon so that it's forced to basically be within this epsilon interval around LK. Okay. So, um, let, uh, let y be an element of this alpha interval, which we, we're also now relabeling alpha delta. Uh, so, but we'll keep it alpha for now, but that's what we're using as our delta. So, k minus alpha to k plus alpha. So, let it be an element of this interval around here. What I want to show you is that, um, so to show, to show that uh, the modulus of f, um, sorry, not f, L evaluated at y minus uh, L evaluated at k is going to be less than epsilon. That's what I want to show you. So I've taken some arbitrary point within this uh, alpha interval around k, which we are using as our delta interval. So you might as well relabel this delta here, k alpha, if you like. Uh, so this is this alpha interval now around k. I want to show you 
that that point is going to be mapped into this epsilon interval around LK, which is exactly the statement that the value it's ascribed by the L function uh, is a distance away from uh, LK uh, less than epsilon. Okay, so now what we do is we apply the triangle inequality, basically. Uh, we, we apply the triangle inequality for the real numbers. So this, effectively, is in the metric space of the real line. This is effectively the distance between Ly and Lk. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is going to be less than or equal to the distance from the value Ly uh, to the value that the function fn ascribes that point y plus the distance that um, the function fn ascribes y to the distance that uh, to the func value that the function fn ascribes k plus the distance that the function fn ascribes k uh, to the value that the limiting function ascribes k. So basically, we've used the generalized version of the triangle inequality there. Usually, the triangle inequality only has two things in. In this case, what we're doing is... Um, uh, is saying that it's going to have uh, three things in. Uh, so that's just a generalization. You get that by induction on the triangle inequality, basically. Okay, uh, right. So let's try and... Um, Firstly, what we could do is replace these distances with what they are, and uh, then, of course, I've manufactured this problem, basically, so that they're going to all be less than epsilon over 3. Uh, but basically, firstly, I want to give you some intuition as to wh what we're actually doing in terms of the picture. So let me draw another picture. Uh, I will need a big picture to be able to see this because we need both the limit function and the f big n function around here. Right, so we have our limit function here, okay? Uh, we have our point k, which I'll say is this point here, and it's ascribed some value l of k here, okay? We want, we have constructed some epsilon interval, which is drawn very bigly, so that epsilon over 3 still looks visible. So this is our epsilon interval, and we want to find a delta interval around k, uh, such that they are all mapped into there, basically. What we have then done is we've constructed an epsilon interval, sorry, an epsilon ribbon, around the limit function. So I'll just label that the limit function here. So this is our epsilon interval around the limit function. We have said, uh, we have found uh, some function f big N of x, which I'll just draw like this, uh, within the, that is within this uh, epsilon ribbon. So this is the function f big N of x. Right. What we then did is said, OK, this function, f big N of x, is a continuous function. So I can draw you the epsilon over 3 by 3 interval around the value that this ascribes to um, k. So this ascribes some value uh, here, which is f big N of k here. And I can draw you an epsilon over 3 interval around that. And how am I going to draw this? Uh, so I'll do it by colouring in. So there's, let's say, that's our epsilon over f by 3 uh, neighbourhood around uh, this point. What we then did is said, OK, we can apply the fact that f big N is continuous and construct a delta interval here. Uh, some delta interval around k, uh, such that all of those points are mapped into uh, this epsilon interval around here. Now what we want to prove is that that uh, satisfies our condition, uh, that this delta interval here satisfies our condition that all of the points of L of x are going to be mapped into the epsilon interval around L of k. And the reason is that the distance between uh, the value that uh, so let's say we've taken some little y, which is an element of this delta interval, and what we want to prove is that the distance between the value that the function L ascribes the value y, uh, so I don't know if I can possibly draw this on because it's going to get so crowded, I'll colour it in. So here's the point y here, then it's just being ascribed this value up here, and basically what we've said is that... Uh, if we want to work out the distance between that point L of Y, which is this blue point here, and the value L of X, L of K rather, which is this orange point here, okay, um, then the way we can do it is we can say it's going to be less than the distance from that point here to the value that the function Fn ascribes the point Y, which is, uh, let me get some other colours, I'll do this in yellow, this yellow point here, okay? So there's the, that's what Fn ascribes the point Y. So basically, this distance 
this distance between those two there and it's going to get very crowded I'm going to highlight that one blue basically that's going to be blue there then I've said okay now remember it was continuous uh, so we can add on the distance between the value that the function fn ascribes y and the dis and the fun value that the function fn ascribes k so um, where is the value that fn ascribes k so that is basically this distance here between those two points uh, so that I'll highlight that one in pink so there, there is the value that fn ascribes the value y. Here is the value that fn ascribes the value k. We assured the way we set up this uh, delta interval was so that that distance was going to be less than, uh, strictly less than epsilon over 3. Remember, we drew this epsilon over 3 interval around f of n k and said, OK, construct this interval down here green such that the distance between the point uh, fn uh, sorry, between the point fn uh, or evaluated at y and fn k is going to be less than epsilon over 3 for all y as an element of this green interval. And then finally, we said, OK, plus the distance between fn k, which is that value there, and the value lk, which is that orange value up there. So um, it's just getting completely uh, crowded now. Let's put green in. Uh, so that distance there, basically. So we've completed the, the sides of a square, basically. And we're saying that the distance, that direct distance down there, uh, what should I highlight that? I'll highlight that red. So this direct distance between them here is that distance. And that's going to be less than or equal to that distance plus that distance plus that distance. Now, because uh, they are, because the function f n is within the epsilon ribbon of the function l, then the distance between the function uh, between the value l y, uh, the value that uh, the function l ascribes y, which is this value here, and the value that the function f big n y ascribes y, that's going to be strictly less than epsilon over three, because that was this epsilon over three ribbon basically. So it has to be within there. And remember, this is the distance in the real line metric. So that's just the modulus of ly minus f uh, big N of y, which is going to be less than epsilon over 3. Because we uh, set, because the function f big N uh, of x was continuous, uh, then this the value of the distance between the uh, the value of the distance between the value that the function f big n ascribes y and the value that the function f big n ascribes k is going to be less than epsilon over 3 because that is the way that we set up this interval. This interval was the interval of points such that that was true. And the fact that the function f big n was continuous meant that we could always find such an interval uh, so that that was true. So that's going to be less than epsilon over 3. And finally, again, this one is going to be less than epsilon over 3 for the same reason as this one is less than epsilon over 3. The function f big n is within the epsilon ribbon of L. So it's certainly true that it's within the epsilon ribbon of L at the point k. So again, it's going to be less than epsilon over 3. So if you add them all together, then you're going to get something that is strictly less uh, than epsilon over 3. So ly, lk, the distance between ly and lk is going to be strictly less than epsilon. So basically, I have shown you that if you take an arbitrary point within this uh, alpha or delta, or whatever you want to call it, interval around this value k, uh, then it is um, is going to satisfy the property that uh, that entire interval is mapped into um, the epsilon interval around l of k. And therefore, I've done what you required me to do. Because x was an arbitrary, sorry, because k was an arbitrary point within this interval, I didn't make any specification, so it's true for all points in the interval. Also, epsilon was arbitrary, I didn't make any specifications there, so I've done it for all epsilon, and therefore I have found you the condition uh, for, um, for, for continuity. So therefore, the function L of x is continuous. So what we have proven is that if you have a sequence of continuous functions which are converging uniformly to another function, then the function which they are converging uniformly to will be another continuous function.